Hello. In this video, we'll be configuring a point-to-site connection in a Windows Azure subscription so that uh, you can connect your laptop or desktop machine to your Windows uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure, which is say now, Microsoft Azure uh, virtual networks to interact with your virtual machines. Um, on screen at the present is my uh, subscription and what I've done is created several different um, elements needed for this demonstration. First of all, I have a virtual network already configured. So let's take a look at that virtual network. Here on the networks on the left hand side, we can see my virtual network called DevNet. If I select that network, and got a dashboard. We can see some elements uh, in the dashboard. We can see that there's one virtual machine uh, connected uh, to this DevNet network, and it's got an IP address of 192.6804, um, which is part of subnet-1. Under configure on our DevNet network, we can see in here we can provide details of DNS servers. If you don't add DNS servers to your, your virtual networks, then Microsoft Azure will provide name resolution for you. As I scroll down, we can see the details of this DevNet network, we can see the address space it's using, and the subnet address this network is using, along with a tick box there that says configure point to site connectivity, and we shall be coming back to that tick box um, in a little while. If we go back to our main menu, and we scroll up, we can also see that I've created a storage account to store all my virtual disk files. And we've also got a cloud service. If I select the cloud service and go to dashboard, we can see here that we've got uh, the cloud service that's got one core associated with it. And that core is associated with my virtual machine that I've created. But it's over on the right hand side that I'm interested right now. Over on the right hand side, we can see the public virtual IP address, the VIP address. This is the uh, public address that's been assigned to my cloud service. So all connections to virtual machines in this cloud service will be made through that public IP address. And the way that it works is that when you create a virtual machine, that virtual machine exposes uh, port numbers, endpoints. These endpoints are associated with this public IP address. So when we make a connection, we connect the public IP address and a particular port number, and those port numbers are mapped to um, services on specific virtual machines. In this example, you can see that I've got two port numbers um, exposed, and they're connected to services on virtual machine one. If we take a look at virtual machine one, so we go back, and scroll up and take a look at Virtual Machine 1. If I select Virtual Machine 1 and go to Endpoints, we can see they've got two endpoints for this Virtual Machine. One endpoint, which is the RDP endpoint, that maps the external port 58295 to port 3389 on the Virtual Machine. Then we've got public port 5986 that maps to private port 5986 and that's for PowerShell. So what we're saying here is that by having this public to private port mappings and the, virtual IP, and the um, IP address provided by a cloud service, then we should be able to use things like RDP and remote PowerShell sessions to connect to the virtual machine. And we can do that. If we go back to the virtual machine details, then on the bottom of the screen, we can say connect. Now this is going to try and download an RDP file for me, or open up an RDP file. So I'm going to say open there, and connect. And that will take a second to connect to RDP. And I can use a um, account name that I previously configured, and a password to RDP into my virtual machine.
this will just take a second to sign me in. I've not done any, anything special on this virtual machine. It's just a default install of uh, Server 2012 R2 Data Center Edition. So when you create a cloud service and you create a storage account and virtual machine, you will be able to connect to the virtual machine using RDP. And you'll also be able to connect to the virtual machine using uh, PowerShell. Add a virtual network into the mix and you can also assign your virtual machine or IP addresses from your virtual network um, rather than it being associated with um, virtual network provided by Microsoft Azure. So there we're logged in now to that, that, that virtual machine. Now that's great and it allows me to do testing but what if you've got a group of virtual machines and you want to be able to test connectivity to them as if you were connecting from your corporate network. Um, now you could set up a site-to-site -site VPN connection but for testing and development that might take a lot of effort. So what Microsoft have done is said look as well as site-to-site -site VPN connections you can also create point-to-site VPN connections. In a point-to-site VPN connection we'll download a VPN client to your laptop and from your laptop you can create a, a VPN connection into your virtual network. Once you're connected to the virtual network you have access to um, all the virtual machines that are configured on that virtual network. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll um, exit this RDP session we will um, configure the point site connection um, and then we'll delete the endpoints, we'll delete the RDP endpoints and prove that we can connect into um, this um, server by using our uh, point site connection only. Now just to, to make sure we can do that under local server here you'll notice that RDP is enabled and we're just going to make sure that we can connect from any RDP client. So other than that, I'm just going to close this connection here. And we'll now configure our point to site connection. And that starts off by going back to our virtual network. So if I click networks, and then select DevNet and then select configure then we have this one tick box configure point to site connectivity if I select that so we select point to site connectivity and then we say save and we've got the warning change the configuration network that's used will briefly disrupt connections so if you did have connections already um, with this virtual network they might be uh, interrupted now as we complete the point to site uh, connectivity option now ticking the point to site connectivity box is just one thing we have to do and it will take um, for this first part just a couple of minutes to configure that point site connection so while it does that we'll pause the video and then we'll um, restart once that point site connection has been created so once your configuration of the point to point site connectivity has completed yeah, there are two more steps that we have to do to complete the configuration of the point site connectivity both are done through uh, this devnet screen uh, first of all, we need to look at the certificate section. And we need to use the certificate section to upload a root certificate to support authentication between my client machine and the DevNet network. The second thing we need to do is configure a gateway. The gateway is provided by Microsoft to act as a gateway from their public network through to our private DevNet network. Now if we start off by selecting certificates, so selecting certificates here, and you see it says a point to site VPN has been configured, but it's missing a root certificate, upload a root certificate. Now you can um, get certificates from several places, but for test and development 
um, environments. There's an application called makecert.exe. If you follow this link, you will find instructions on using makecert.exe to create both a root certificate and a client certificate for your, for your laptop desktop device that you're going to use in this point site configuration. There are several other ways to make certificates, but I find for again test and development, makecert.exe is one of the quickest and easiest. Now I've already used makecert.exe to uh, make a root certificate and a client certificate. So I'm going to use the upload a root certificate Select selection here. And I'm going to browse for a file and browse for my uh, certificate. So once browsed, there we have the name of my root certificate that I'm going to upload. So before starting this whole process, it's probably a good idea if you upload a root certificate, if you create a root certificate first, you will only be able to upload it after you've selected the tick box to configure your point to site uh, connection. The second thing we need to do is go to dashboard where we now configure our gateway connection. And you can see here that it says DevNet, the gateway was not created. Um, here, all we have to do is from the bottom, select create gateway. It says then, do you want to create a gateway for virtual network DevNet? Yes, I do. And now it'll go for the process of creating the gateway connection for me and uh, securing access to it based on my root certificate. This will again now take um, several minutes to, to complete. So we're going to again pause the video and come back once this gateway object has been completed. The gateway has now been created and we can see here back on the dashboard of DevNet that we've got the gateway created. There's no client connection just yet. And we can see the gateway IP address that's going to be used. Microsoft make it very easy, it's easy for us to finish off this uh, configuration. You can see here under quick glance that we've got two VPN client packages that we can download. I've got a 64-bit client so I'm going to download the 64-bit client package and once downloaded I'm going to double click the install and it'll install a uh, VPN connection for me that we can then use to connect into um, our DevNet network through Microsoft's gateway. So I'll just take a minute just to download that package. Uh, I'll pause the video while I'm doing that and then we'll restart the video once the package is installed. My client VPN package, package is downloaded. Uh, I've installed the package and now it's time to test. Before we do though, we want to make sure it's a, a t proper test that we're definitely using the virtual network uh, and connecting to it through the virtual gateway uh, and not through our um, pre-configured endpoints. So before we, we test the VPN client, I'm going to go back to my virtual machine. So select my virtual machine and then select endpoints. And I'm going to delete the endpoints. So delete the endpoint for PowerShell. I'm going to delete the endpoint for remote desktops as well. Now again, that will take just one minute to uh, finish off deleting the endpoints. And the idea here now is that the only way I can connect into this uh, virtual machine is through my um, gateway and not through these endpoints that we're about to delete. So we will um, give uh, Azure just uh, a minute to delete those endpoints and then we'll restart the video. Endpoints have now been deleted. So there's no way I can use those endpoints against this virtual machine. Don't worry that you delete the endpoints because endpoints can always be re-added by clicking add, choosing a standalone endpoint then selecting a pre-configured endpoint from this drop-down list. So I can select remote desktop and it will create the endpoint for me again. So if you need them in the future, you can always re-add them. 
But what we need to do now is test our point to site VPN connection. So if I minimize it in Explorer, you can see DevNet there is our point to site VPN connection that we downloaded and installed. If I right click and say connect and disconnect, and then connect to DevNet, it'll just take a second to run through and connect that DevNet connection. So there you go, we've, we have a connection now. If I minimize network connections, I've got um, command prompts open here. If we do an IP config, we should see that amongst other things that we have a PPP connection to DevNet. And we should also now be able to connect. So if I ping the IP address of my virtual machine, we get a reply. Remember, with the endpoints deleted, it's the only way we can connect in is through our virtual network. Now, in order for that ping to work, I have disabled the appropriate firewall rules in the virtual machine previously to allow that ping to work. We'd also now be able to uh, RDP in through the virtual network. If we had multiple machines on that virtual network, we could connect to each one of those virtual machines. Now, although this is a point to site connection we've created here, Configuring a site-to-site -site connection follows a similar pattern, um, but we would also then need a uh, RAS server or some other server on-premise to um, provide our end of the site-to-site -site link. Thank you for watching this video, and keep an eye out in the future for more videos on Windows uh, Azure, or Microsoft Azure, we should say now, and other Windows technologies. Thank you.